Today we are going to be doing an intuitive movement flow. And this flow is really all about just using our intuition, our third eye, how we feel we need to move in our body and moving through that. So a lot of times in yoga classes, it's very structured and you follow the cues and you follow the directions and the poses. And often this causes us to not listen to our body and our inner knowing. So in this class, I want to be really playful. I want you to do what feels good. Don't do what doesn't feel good. And if you want to change a pose or flow through it, make it a little bit more fluid, more dancey, or really sit into the posture and make it a more restorative practice, that's totally up to you. I just want you to do what feels good in your body and start working on building that intuitive muscle. Especially as women, we are such intuitive beings, but often we are taught to not use our intuition and to really question and second guess ourselves. So in yoga, it's a great time to really work on that intuitive muscle so that in our lives we can use our intuition to better ourselves, to have a better life, and just really focus on doing things that serve us and releasing that which doesn't. So and I'm just so excited for you to flow with me today. If you do have some amethyst crystals, I recommend setting them nearby. I love having crystals that kind of go along with the theme of my practice nearby and using them in a meditation prior to the practice. So do grab your amethyst if you have one. And if you don't have an amethyst, that is perfectly fine. It's all about just working with the energy of the crystal versus the actual physical crystal itself. So we will be using this with our intention setting practice, but like I said, you do not have to have it. So often we feel our intuition in a specific place. So for me, I feel mine in my gut and in my chest. So if you have your crystal now, go ahead and place it on the area where you feel your intuitive senses come to light. And if you don't know, that's okay. Just kind of guess where you think that they come into play. And if you have your crystal, go ahead and set it on that spot. Um, if you don't have a crystal, just use your hand. And go ahead and close your eyes and we will set our intention for the class. So our intention for the class is I listen to my body's cues and signals. I flow through my intuition. I listen to my body's cues and signals. I flow through my intuition. I listen to my body's cues and signals. I flow through my intuition. Breathing in this intention through your entire being, allow it to fill your body with this beautiful, sparkling, purple, indigo energy. Seeing it resonate at your third eye. Seeing it resonate in the space where you feel your intuition the most. Exhale, release all that no longer serves you. Go ahead and open your eyes and we will get started into our flow. Coming into our tabletop position here, palms underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. And we're just gonna start to move the body in any way that feels good to you. Blowing through a cat-cat flow variation. Really intuitive movements here. Maybe you aren't even in cat cow, and that is okay as well. I just want you to play and do whatever feels good in your body in this moment. Good. Take one more deep breath here. And on your next exhale, come back to all fours. I want you to plant the forearms down on the ground, tuck the toes, and walk the heels in just a little bit as we pike the hips into our dolphin. Walking the feet in just a little bit, making sure that you're really pressing, pressing out of the shoulder blades here. And allowing the head to release. Now from here, get intuitive, get playful. Maybe you lift one arm up and then drop it down. Maybe you lift the other arm up, dropping it down. Maybe you lower the knees, coming into your cow pose on the forearms, and then pressing back into dolphin, pedaling out the feet, doing whatever feels good to you here. Just get really playful with it. 
There are no rules. Maybe you lift up one leg and the other. Coming to a moment of stillness. One more breath. Go ahead and lower the knees back to the earth. Open the hips wide, pressing back into your child's pose. Here, keeping that fluidity, that intuition, maybe you have the knees together and you roll forward with the arms behind you. Maybe that feels better in your body today, pressing the forehead into the earth. Or maybe you stay with the legs wide, really sinking into the hips, wiggling from side to side. And one of my favorite variations of child's pose is to walk the elbows out just a little bit and have a little sharp fin up above you here, or prayer hands, pressing out through the hands and the elbows. You'll feel a really deep stretch in the armpits here as you press back into the hips. Breathing into the space, the pause, Sometimes those moments of stillness is where we find our intuition the most, just getting quiet, taking a moment to really listen before we act, before we move. One more deep breath. Release the palms if you have them pressed together. Roll back up to all fours, tucking the toes and pressing back into your downward facing dog. Pedaling out the feet here. Really just doing whatever feels good in this space. Good. From here, I want you to pick up that right foot and cross it over the top of the left thigh. So you've got a little bit of a figure four going on here. And you really have to press out through the palm to sink into that left leg as you press back feeling a really deep stretch on the right side of the leg. One more breath. Come back to center, pedal out the feet. Switching sides, crossing the left leg over the right, pressing back into that right heel in our figure four down dog variation. One more breath. Plant that foot again, downward facing dog, and slowly tiptoe towards the top of your mat, coming to a forward fold at the top of your mat. Walking the feet apart, just a little bit wider than the hips distance, clasping the elbows and ragdolling forward with a really generous bend in the knees, swaying from side to side, loosening out the back, the hips. Maybe finding that moment of stillness. Plant the palms once again and clasp the hands behind the back as you reach the chest forward and exhale to fold, really feeling that deep, beautiful stretch in the shoulder blades and the back, opening up the chest. One more breath, release the hands, come up to a flat back position, walk the feet in just a little bit, and I want you to bend in that right leg, plant the right palm, and open up to the side with your left arm here. So really reaching out through the palm, feeling a beautiful deep stretch in that left leg. Good. Release it back down, flat back, and you're gonna bend into that left leg, plant the left palm in the center of your mat, and extend the right arm up. One more breath. Good, release. Slowly rolling up, bone by bone. Coming to a standing position, head is the last thing to come up. With the palms together, we're going to reach the arms up overhead 
as we do on our inhale, on the exhale, we are going to release the body forward, give a little bounce, and then come back up, okay? And we're gonna do this four times, really making sure that you keep the core engaged, the back engaged as well, so that you don't pull something, and really have buoyancy in the knees. When you go down, they kind of bounce, and then come back up, okay? We're going to do this four times, really activating our entire body and getting into that flow. So reaching the arms up overhead, inhale, exhale, fall forward, bounce, and up. Three more, forward, and up. Release, and up. One more, release, and up. Hands to heart center. Very nice, my loves. It's such a beautiful way to just release the entire body and really get the energy flowing. So from here, reaching the arms up overhead, coming to a point with the top of the hands here. So just your little steeple point. And we are going to reach that left leg behind the right, getting a little bend in that right leg as we bend over to our right side. So we're feeling this really deep stretch. I will show you from the front. Deep stretch in the left side body. Good. One more breath here. Come back to standing. Other side as we reach over to the left. We take that right leg behind and we extend. Try not to crunch too much into this left side. And we stay lifted up as we look under that right shoulder. Good. Slowly come back to center. And we will stand at the top of our mat. Inhale, reaching the arms up overhead. Exhale, folding through the midline. Inhale, reaching the chest forward. And exhale, stepping the feet back to your plank position. Just holding an hour plank. You're going to put the right palm in the middle of your mat and rotate onto the right side, coming into our side plank here. From here, you're going to roll to the other side. We're just going to roll back and forth a few times. So you're gonna plant the left palm, side plank on the left side. We'll do this two more times. Inhale, to the right, and exhale, to the left. Good, coming back to your right side, and you're going to reach this left leg across as you come into the side plank variation. From here, we are going to lower the hips down and reach them back up. Two more, just like this. Inhale. Up. Inhale. Up. And hold. Very nice. Step that foot back to your side plank. Roll through the middle. Good. And we'll do it on the other side. Plant the left palm in the center of your mat. Rotate to that left side and step that right leg across, coming into the side plank variation. On your inhale, we lower the hips. Exhale, press, really using that right foot to press. Two more, inhale, and press. One more, inhale, and press, good. Planting that right palm, stepping back into your plank, lowering the knees, and coming into your child's pose here. Taking whichever variation that you would like, you can either stay really stable and solid and grounded here, or you can kind of move around into the hips, come back to the shark fin variation, whatever you want to do here. Releasing the forehead to the earth, finding that moment of stillness yet again. One more breath. Slowly bring the knees back together. All fours, tuck the toes, downward facing dog. From here, walking the feet in just a little bit, taking that right arm across to the left, outside edge of the leg, and twisting under that left shoulder here. Good, really opening through the chest, other side, planting that right palm, twisting across to the right side as you grab the outside edge of the right 
shin or ankle with the left hand, pressing back into the feet. One more breath. Good. Slowly coming back to your downward facing dog. From here, I just want you to open the feet up just a little bit and walk yourself back into your malasana, okay? So this is our yogic squat. And what we really want to do, I'll face you so you can see what I'm doing, is settle back onto the heels, reaching the chest forward and pressing the knees open with the elbows. And this is one of my favorite stretches for the hips. Also a very grounding pose. And when we're tapping into our intuition, we really want to be grounded first. If we are up in the air and thinking about a thousand different things and our energy is just all over the place, it's really hard to listen to that intuition, to that gut instinct. So first being grounded is always really, really helpful. And this posture really connects you from your root chakra to the earth. It's very grounding. Take one more breath. Plant the palms behind you, lower onto the ground and facing the top of your mat with your legs extended. Grabbing the toes of the feet and come on to balance on the tailbone, on the sacrum. And I want you to try, if you can, to extend the legs forward. If this doesn't work for you, just come into a modified bow pose here. But try grabbing the big toes with the peace finger and the thumb, or the outside edges of the feet, and reaching the legs up only as far as they would like to go. Maybe you stay here, really engaging the core in this modified boat pose. Maybe, just maybe you open the leg. This one I tend to topple over here and that's fine. We are playing and usually there is some trial and error when it comes to playing here. You could extend one leg and then the other. Just getting really playful here, almost like a child's pose. Good. Take one more breath. Bringing the legs back down to the earth and just roll like a ball back and forth. Just massaging up through the spine. Do one more here with me. And as you come up to a seated position, opening the legs, facing the long edge of your mat. Taking the arms up overhead. And on your exhale, we fold forward, really getting into the hips. In this seated straddle position. Flexing the feet, trying to keep the legs rotated outwards. And maybe you just come down onto the earth. Maybe you are up on a block or bolster here. Or maybe you inhale, reach the chest forward. And as you exhale, you fold. Being very fluid with this pose. One more breath. Slowly walking the hands back in to the legs, bringing the legs in just a little bit. We're just going to windshield wiper the legs from side to side. Massaging out the hips. Good. Maybe you hold for a second on one side and then the other. And taking any poses that feel needed and good in your body right now. Maybe you need a child pose. Maybe you need a happy baby. Anything that you need, do that now. And then come with me into our Shavasana. I am going to do Shavasana lying on my back with the legs up in the air. Kind of a restorative pose here to finish the class, but you can do whatever you would like for your Shavasana. So I'm going to reach my legs up overhead, just allowing the blood to release down. This is one of my favorite poses to relax here. 
And I'm going to open the palms facing up towards the sky as a symbol of receptivity, receiving that intuitive guidance from God, the universe, whatever resonates with you. Starting to slow down the breathing here. Coming back into our bodies. Our bodies truly do have all of the answers that we could ever need. We just have to get quiet to tune in to our deepest inner knowing and surrender. Shavasana. to the moon and back and I cannot wait to see you on the mat or the dance floor at the base.